In my last few videos I had a look at recently played games by Hans Niemann because whenever Hans is involved with stories on and off the board something exciting is happening. So he is currently playing in Zagreb, the capital of uh, Croatia and he is on two and a half out of three winning some very spectacular games against uh, Motilev and, and uh, against Ivanchuk. You can look at my channel for the, uh, the other videos of course, make sure to subscribe as well. And now I would like to see how Hans is doing in round four. He's playing with the black pieces against Zdenko Kozul, who is a very experienced grandmaster from Croatia, 57 years old, very experienced grandmaster and winner of the European Championships in 2006. So not an easy game for Hans at all, but let's see how is he, he doing in, um, in this game. So Kozul starts with the move 1d4, knight of six, c4 e6 g3 so white is looking for uh, ways to get the uh, catalan opening fianchetto and his bishop there are a lot of different setups possible but hans goes for the sharpest system with the move c5 putting pressure against the pawn on d4 and white reacts in the most principled way by advancing the pawn to d5 pawn takes d5 c takes d5 d6 knight c3 g6 Bishop g2, both sides are fianchettoing their bishop, completing their development on the king's side. And now we have reached one of the main lines of the Benoni. It's characterized by this pawn on c5. Black also has a weak pawn on d6, but will not be easy for white to, to target that pawn. And white has a space advantage, thanks to the pawn on, um, on d5 and possibilities to occupy the center any time soon. What is Black's main strategy? Well, one of the ideas is to bring up the pawns on the queen side with a6, b5, to grab some space over there. Another idea is to activate the bishop on this uh, long diagonal. And trading of pieces is not disadvantageous for, uh, for Black because his position is cramped. So let's see how this uh, battle um, Unfold. So rook e8 is played with the idea to play here the move um, knight e4 to um, offer the exchange of knights, activate his bishop. White has different options, but Kozul played here the move knight e2. This looks strange because you're obstructing your bishop from, uh, from c1, cannot be developed, but you're guarding the e4 square. This is still very well-known theory. Black plays a6, preparing this move b5. White goes a4, stopping Black's expansion. Knight bd7. And here, Kozul goes for a sideline with the move a5. He's trying to get his knight to c4 to get a nice grip. Covering the b6 square will be harder for Black to advance the pawn to b5. But he plays it anyway. It's a good move. b5. White captures en passant. Black recaptures with a knight. So that's all... Very standard way of playing. And now the knight comes in to b3. So white's knight is on its way to, uh, to a5. Very standard theory. Now the main continuation used to be here, knight c4. When uh, you're controlling this a5 square, so white is not able to come in with this knight to, uh, to c6. If you play here rook a4 to attack the knight, the knight goes back to attack the rook. And if the rook goes back, the knight comes back to c4. Many games have ended in a draw in, um, in this way. But Hans is not interested in making a draw against uh, somebody who is significantly lower rated than him. Goes for the fighting move, bishop f5. That's a very nice mm -hmm. idea, of course. Knight a5 played here. And now the knight comes into e4. So we understand the idea that the bishop supports the e4 square. And white needs to think... How to deal with this possibility of exchanging minor pieces? Well, black is actually threatening to take twice on c3. And therefore the move rook a3 is played. That's an original way of developing the rook as you're protecting the knight on uh, c3. This is very standard for this particular opening variation. Black plays the move queen d7. So the rooks are connected and maybe at some point black can even consider offering the exchange of bishops on h3. Bishop d2 was played. Not a bad move, but 
I have my doubts about it. I will explain you very soon why. Black continues with a move h5, looking for ways to launch an attack on the king side. White is not interested allowing the march of the h pawn. Played here the move h4, and Hans goes for the move rook a b8. Obviously, the rook is much more actively placed on this half open file, hoping to, uh, to put some pressure against this pawn on uh, b2. Now, white played here this move, bishop f4. So what was now exactly the idea of bishop d2? I'm sorry, I cannot really answer it. I think white changed his mind. The bishop was absolutely not needed on, uh, on uh, d2, in my opinion, because the rook already fulfilled the defensive uh, duty of supporting this knight on uh, c3. So, small inaccurate play by white, but still, it's a game, anything can happen here. Still, a move like uh, bishop h3 is interesting, could be considered, but Hans played here rook bc8. Also, a remarkable uh, idea. First, he goes rook b8, then rook c8. Maybe he has ideas to uh, advance the pawn to, uh, to c4. But, first things first, white. No longer wants to wait here, what black is contemplating with this knight on uh, e4. And played here the move f3. So the idea is that if you're going to take on c3, there is b takes c3. And white now, the knight is no longer on e4, gets the opportunity to mobilize its pawn formation. Bring the pawn to e4 and then I think white center is more impressive than black's extra pawn on a6. Therefore, black should not take on c3 yet, but start here with a very important move. Bishop, d4 check. King goes to h2, and now knight takes c3, b takes c3. And the point of black's play is that now the bishop can come into e3. So the bishop is no longer needed guarding its king, no longer needed to put pressure on this long diagonal, but you're aiming for the exchange of, uh, of bishops which actually happened. Why decided to take her on e3? But very interesting and important idea is to play the move c4, to activate a rook along the third rank. Now, if you would exchange on f4, it seems as if white's king's position is very vulnerable. Black can even attack the pawns on e2 and h4. But after e4, attacking the bishop, queen takes h4, the king comes back to g1, this is not an easy position at all because, okay, black has an extra pawn, but this center can potentially become very strong. There are ideas even to attack this knight on b6. It's anybody's uh, game. Didn't happen, so let's see what Kozul uh, played in the game. He took on e3, rook takes e3. This rook is looking very nice and prevents white from mobilizing his pawn center. Rook b3, the rook attacks the knight, but where's the knight going? Is it going back to a8? That would be, of course, a very sad decision. No way, Hans is thinking only to move forward. Played here to move queen a4, so that the knight on um, a5 is also attacked. Rook takes b6 played, queen takes a5, attacking the rook. Rook takes d6, it's a sharp game. White captures that weak pawn and black takes the pawn on c3. So white has two extra pawns in the center, black has two pawns on the queen side. And which pawn is stronger? Well, it's a race. Of course, the position of the pawns matter, but the activity of the pieces, of the major pieces, is usually more valuable in uh, such sharp positions. And I think this queen and rook, they are pretty active. White. Captures the pawn on a6 and makes space for the d pawn to come forward. Black runs first with the move c4. And now, big moment, what to do? Maybe d6 can be played, but probably black is going to move the queen and run with the pawn to c3, to c2, to attack the queen. It's not easy at all. So, Kozul played here rook c6. It's a human decision to get the rook behind that passed pawn, trying to gain some control over the uh, passed pawn on the C file. But very strong move. Hans played queen b2. He didn't take on c6 because that only helps white 
to create a passed pawn to open up the d file. Now with this move queen to b2, you're making space for your c pawn as well as you're attacking the pawn on e2. Rook takes c8, bishop can just recapture. That's absolutely fine. And now it's uh, hard, uh, hard to say what white should do, but there is still one very interesting line I want to show you. It was not played in the game, but white can protect the pawn on e2. Now, after the move c3, c pawn is very dangerous. You can play rook, uh, sorry, you can play bishop f1 to protect the pawn on, uh, on e2. And uh, well, if you play something like c2, there's queen d2 and the promotion square is still under control. So that's not a problem. However, something like rook takes f3 can be played because the pawn on e2 is pinned. Now the line continues with queen d4. Nice center centralization of the queen stopping a check because the queen covers the f2 square. But more importantly, you're neutralizing this pawn on uh, c3. Bishop f5 is a nice idea. And if you run with the pawn, black's idea is to go rook d3. The pawn is pinned still. Bishop protects the rook. If the queen takes d3, bishop takes d3, d7. The d pawn is suddenly faster. Now the queen has to come back to guard the promotion square. Now white can play rook d1 to attack the bishop. And uh, well, things are not, not easy here. If you play the move c2, then rook takes d3, queen f2 check, bishop g2. Black is getting a second queen. d8 queen check. King h7, and this is a totally bizarre position, incredibly sharp. White has a rook and a bishop against the queen. And after a move like king h3, I think white is able to hold on. But this is a very deep line, and we should go back to the position in the game to understand that it's around move 30. People have spent a lot of time, and all the lines we have covered, they are very difficult to calculate. The move played in the game by Kozul is the move queen a1. Very understandable, offering the exchange of queens. But what is Hans going to do? Is he moving the queen away? No. He pushes the pawn to c3. So the queen is protected. If white swaps the queens, this pawn is unstoppable because bishop is out of play. Black is about to play here this move, bishop f5. And after rook to b1, threatening the pawn on b2, it's rook takes e2 when the rook protects its pawn from the side. And on the next move, it's bishop f5 to attack the rook on b1 and the b-pawn will be promoted. That's the idea. So white cannot go for the exchange of queens. Instead, queen a8 was played, counterattack. The bishop is pinned. But after rook takes e2, now black also sets a huge threat against the bishop on g2. Queen takes c8 with check. White is... A piece up for the moment. King to g7. And white, what should he do? Should he defend the bishop? Definitely. In the game, they're followed queen h3. But what happens if you protect with the rook coming to g1? Then the c pawn is really strong. Now white cannot do much. His bishop is pinned. The rook is tied down. There are no good checks. If you advance the pawn to d6, now the brilliant idea, and this was seen by Hans in advance, it's the move c1 queen. If you take the queen, it's rook takes g2, deflection. The rook on g1, if it takes the rook on g2, it's queen takes c1 and black is a queen up and will on the next move wrap up the pawn on uh, d6. Therefore, you cannot take the rook, but if the king goes either to h3 or h1, it's going to be checkmate on h2. The same if you go king h1, it's rook h2 with checkmate. Fantastic calculation by Hans Niemann in this game. Instead, there follow the move queen h3. But also here, the queen is offside. Black goes for the move c2. And white, white's pieces are just stuck. g4 was played, hoping for some counterplay opening up the king's side. Black may even just promote the pawn right now. But even stronger is this move, rook d2, with the idea that after any move, White in the game played here the move f4, but now it's rook to d1. So rather than promoting the pawn, you are cutting off white's rook on f1, guarding the promotion square. And next, the c pawn will be uh, queened. In the game, there followed rook f2. 
with the idea that if you promote a pawn, then it's still rook takes b2 and black is only an exchange up. But much better is the move played in the game. Queen to d4. Beautiful shot hitting this rook on f2. And white cannot do anything because the rook is hanging. Black is even threatening to promote the pawn now. Now the queen is no longer hanging on b2. And if you take the pawn on c2, black's idea is to give a check on g1. King g3. And the rook drops back to d3 with checkmate. The bishop is pinned, can therefore not block on f3. So in the position after the move queen d4, Kozul resigned. And that means that Hans Niemann moves to three and a half out of four. He is on fire. He's totally unstoppable. Playing very impressively, defeating a lot of strong grandmasters in a row. Like it's just very easy for him. It really shows that his training camp with Vladimir Kramnik is paying off. Let's see how Hans is doing in the next couple of rounds. I will keep you updated, so I will see you soon back on my channel. Please subscribe.